Welcome to Simply Logical. This is Venkatesh. There are numerous games, challenges, and puzzles a bean are facing online. In no time, they have become viral as people are seeking various means to spend their time and connect with near and dear ones. In this video, I am going to share few riddles. These riddles and mind games are making rounds on social media as challenges are being forwarded to different WhatsApp, Facebook, and other social media groups. Feel free to pause the video after every riddle. and try yourself before checking the solution let's everyone know your answer in the comment section if you are new to the channel do subscribe to the channel for the newest videos watching let's check the riddles now the riddle states that in a square room there is a cat in every corner there are three cats in front of each cat The riddle asks the total number of cats present inside the square room. Can you solve the riddle? Nowadays you can find many social media platforms flooded with such fun games and riddles that will keep you away from boredom for a long time. Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Let's everyone know your answer in the comment section. Let's check the solution now. There are multiple solution for this riddle. depending on the interpretation if you read that there are four cats in the room and in front of each cat is another three cats then it might lead you to the answer of 16 this is not correct you will have reached this answer if you assumed that there was three cats in front of every cat in the corner that would mean four cats in every corner which is 4 into 4 equals 16 this is incorrect answer Let's understand the riddle properly to achieve the correct solution. From the first statement, in a square room there is a cat in every corner. It is clear that there is a square room with a cat in each corner of the room. Since a square room has four corners, the total number of cats present in the room is 4. The next line states that there are three cats in front of each cat. We know that there are four cats in the corners of the room. When we apply the second statement to this scenario, it is clear that every single cat in the room has three cats in front of it. Thus, one solution to this riddle is four, and most of the people think this is the right solution. Going through this interpretation, the answer is four. Let me explain now the different interpretation. The total number of cats in this square room will be in the range of four to infinity. Let's break this riddle down. In each corner of a square room is a sitting cat. A square room has four corners, one cat per corner, so four cats so far. In front of each cat there are three cats. An important but missing piece of information is which way each cat from each corner is facing. If the four cats are all facing each other, then each cat is facing three cats from the other corners. Therefore, there are still four cats in total. But If any one of the four cats turns and faces their respective corner then there will be infinite cats this is to meet the condition that each cat faces three cats it is a result of recursion without a terminating condition thus in this approach the answer is ranging from 4 to infinity You enter a bedroom there are 34 people you kill 30 how many are in the bedroom let me repeat the riddle listen carefully and comment your answer in the comment section you enter a bedroom there are 34 people you kill 30 how many are in the bedroom feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution do subscribe to the channel for the newest videos watching let's check the solution now If you have already guessed the answer then it's great if you are struggling let me explain the solution now if this were a math equation then you would do 34 minus 30 to get 4 so the answer would be 4 but if you do this in terms of a riddle then it would be different many things the answer would be 5 how well there are 34 people in the room whenever you enter but whenever you add yourself that makes 35 people so if you kill 30 that leaves you with 5 people including yourself but this is not the correct solution there could be another solution to this also 
So the riddle states, you enter a room and there are 34 people. So that could mean that you are one of the 34 people in the room. It doesn't specify whether you and 34 others are in the room or if you are included with the group. So technically the answer could also still be 4 if you include yourself in the 34 people in the room. Wait, this is still not the correct answer. It is clear in the riddle that when you enter the room, there are 34 people. So logically, the answer to this riddle is 35 people. This is because you enter a room with 34 people and including you, that makes totally 35 of you in the bedroom. The question asks you how many people, not how many people who are alive. This is the most important way of analyzing this particular riddle. So many have confused over that and came up with 4 or 5 instead. So the correct answer is 35 people. Forget about how many people are killed. The answer is the total number of people who are in the room. Thus the correct answer is 35. A farmer challenges an engineer, a physicist and a mathematician to build him a fence that encloses the most area with the least amount of fencing. The engineer makes a circular fence claiming that it is the most efficient. The physicist made a long straight line of fence and said the length was infinite as fencing of the world was the most efficient way. The mathematician laughed at the others and then proceeded to build the winning fence. What did he build? Let me repeat the riddle. Listen carefully. A former challenges an engineer, a physicist and a mathematician to build him a fence that encloses the most area with the least amount of fencing. The engineer makes a circular fence, claiming that it is most efficient. The physicist made a long straight line of fence and said the length was infinite as fencing of the world was the most efficient way. The mathematician laughed at the others and then proceeded to build the winning fence. What did he build? Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Do subscribe to the channel for the newest videos watching. Let's everyone know your answer in the comment section. Let me explain the solution now. Remember, this is a riddle in the traditional sense, try to think outside the box. The solution is, the mathematician builds a small circular fence around himself and declares himself on the outside. This is the most important point. Just after building a small circular fence around himself, he declares himself on the outside. In this way, mathematician built a fence to the whole world just by using minimal fencing. He is only one outside the fence. Fill the correct values in the box so that it satisfies every possible equation. This problem does definitely raise a lot of questions in the mind about the approach required to solve the problem with the correct answer in less time. I will present you the most efficient way to get the correct answer. Pause the video and give it a try before checking the solution and do not forget to comment if you have found something interesting. If you are new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you do not miss any of our videos. Let's check the solution now. If you start randomly picking some number and placing in the box, it will not work most of the time. The most efficient way to solve this problem is by creating equations. Let's call the boxes as B1, B2, B3 and B4. Let's quickly write the equations. As per the diagram, the equations are B1 plus B2 equals 14, B1 plus B3 equals 15, B2 plus B4 equals 16 b3 minus b4 is equal to 10. By adding all equations, the equation becomes b1 plus b2 plus b1 plus b3 plus b2 plus b4 plus b3 minus b4 equals 14 plus 15 plus 16 plus 10. 
we can cancel here b4 and solving this equation will yield b1 plus b2 plus b3 equals 55 divided by 2 which is equal to 27.5 Let's call this equation as original equation that is b1 plus b2 plus b3 equals 27.5. This original equation can be written as b3 equals 27.5 minus of b1 plus b2. But we know b1 plus b2 is 14 hence the value of b3 is 27.5 minus 14 which equals to 13.5. Once we get the value of one variable, it becomes easy to solve for other variables. Now we know the value of B3 is 13.5. We will keep this B3 value in order to solve other variables. The original equation can also be written as B2 equals 27.5 minus of B1 plus B3. But we know B1 plus B3 is 15. Hence the value of B2 is 27.5 minus 15 which equals to 12.5. Now consider other equations to solve for other variables. We know from the initial equations b1 plus b2 equals 14. After rewriting the equation, the equation becomes b1 equals 14 minus b2. Since the value of b2 is 12.5, the value of b1 becomes 14 minus 12.5 which equals to 1.5. Similarly from initial equations, we know b3 minus b4 equals 10. And this equation can be rewritten as b4 equals b3 minus 10. Since the value of b3 is 13.5, the value of b4 is 13.5 minus 10 which equals to 3.5. So now we have all the values that is b1 is 1.5, b2 is 12.5, b3 is 13.5 and b4 is 3.5. Now you can place these values in the boxes and you can cross check whether these values satisfy all the equations. So by following these simple steps, we can solve the problem in less than one minute. If you can move two matches is one of the popular puzzles that is currently trending on social media and WhatsApp. Watch the video for this tricky puzzle and its answer. Here the number 508 creatively written down with a few match sticks. In this puzzle, you can only move two match sticks to get the biggest number possible. There are multiple answers to this puzzle depending on your interpretation of the question. Try to find the biggest number possible by switching around the match sticks. Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Do subscribe to the channel for the newest videos watching. Let's see everyone know your answer in the comment section. Let me explain the solution now. The answer to this puzzle often depends on a person's interpretation of the question as well as their overall maths knowledge. Most people say that the highest number possible is 999 that is 999. This number can be obtained by taking the bottom left math sticks of 8 and adding to the top right of the number 5. This will convert both 8 and 5 into 9. Then the bottom left math sticks of 0 has to be rotated and placed at the center of 0 to convert it into a 9. However, some people have found ever bigger numbers just by moving two matches. Uh, if you remove the top and bottom match sticks of 0 and add them after 8 to form a 1, then a significantly large number is obtained. The number that is formed is 51181. So this is the most accepted answer for this particular puzzle. But there is one more solution that is if you remove the top and bottom matrix of 0 and add them before 5 to form a 1, then the number 15,118 is obtained. However, if you flip the image upside down, then you will find an ever bigger number. By flipping 15,118 upside down, the number 81,151 is obtained. But some people do not consider the answer to be correct as you have to flip the image after moving the matrix. As I have already mentioned, answer to the puzzle depends on the interpretation. What is important is not in getting the correct answer but in approaching the right way to get the answer. You may or may not get the right answer but it definitely gives your brain an exercise to think outside the box. You walk into a room and see a bed. 
On the bed, there are two dogs, four cats, a giraffe, five cows and a duck. There are also three chickens flying above the bed. How many legs are on the floor? Let me repeat the riddle. You walk into a room and see a bed. On the bed, there are two dogs, four cats, a giraffe, five cows and a duck. There are also three chickens flying above the bed. How many legs are on the floor? This is one of the most interesting recent riddles to surface online. But what exactly is the answer to this puzzling problem? Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Let's everyone know your answer in the comment section. So let's check the solution now. When we listen to the riddle for the first time, one will think there are a lot of legs to think about. But the answer is much simpler than you would first think. So just how many legs are on the floor of this geological bedroom? Some claims that the answer is zero. However, that answer is wrong. The correct answer is six. There are exactly six legs in contact with the floor. But how? Let me explain now. First, we need to understand that a bed also has four legs. So that already means there is at least four legs on the floor. But how about the other two legs? Because the answer to this puzzle is six. Well, that all stems from the fact that almost all of the animals in this room are all on the gigantic bed and the ones that aren't on the bed are flying in the air above it at the exact moment you walk in. Then where did the other two legs come? The answer to the question is simple, it's your legs. Why? Because you walk into a room, it's as simple as that. That's because as you entered the room, clearly you would have both your feet on the floor. As a result, only your two legs and the four legs of the bed are touching the floor in this animal filled room. Hence the answer is six. This is one of the most interesting riddle and it leads to multiple interpretations. If you think that there are different answers, don't forget to comment your answer in the comment section. Let's see if you can solve this one. Watch the diagram very carefully. Use the clues available in the diagram and now answer what is the height of the table in centimeters. Pause the video and give a try before checking the solution and do not forget to comment the answer in the comment section. If you are new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and enable notifications so that you do not miss any of our videos. Let's check the solution now. Whenever you come across such kind of problems, without hesitation, try to solve it systematically instead of following some blind methods. The most logical way of solving this problem is by creating the equations. If you observe the diagram, there are three important components. They are table, cat and tortoise. Let's assume that height of the table is T, height of cat is C and height of tortoise is R. Let's write down the equations by observing the diagram. As per the first diagram, total height of the table along with cat excluding the tortoise height can be written as T plus C minus r equals 170 centimeters so here t is the height of the table and c is the height of the cat and r is the height of the tortoise since the height of the tortoise is not included in the diagram we are excluding it by subtracting r which is resulting in 170 centimeters as per the second diagram total height of the table along with the tortoise excluding the cat height can be written as t plus r minus c is equal to 130 centimeters if you observe it carefully so the height includes the table and the tortoise excluding the height of the cat hence the equation becomes like this now we have formed two equations when there are two equations then the job becomes simple let's solve these equations by adding both the equations which results in t plus t which is 2t plus c minus r plus r minus c equals to 170 plus 130 centimeters. In the equation, we can cancel plus r minus r plus c minus c. Finally, it results in 2t is equal to 300 centimeters and finally t is equal to 150 centimeters. This is the solution for the problem. The height of the table is 150 centimeters. 
By following these simple steps, we can solve the problem in minimum time. Most of the time what happens is, the people try to solve some blind method without even using the equations. See, sometimes it may work, but most of the times you fail to answer with a given time. So I always recommend to all my students and the candidates to go with a systematic approach instead of following some blind approach. An Arab Sheikh tells his two sons to raise their camels to a distant city to see who will inherit his fortune. The one whose camel is slower will win. The brothers, after wandering aimlessly for days, ask a wise man for advice. After hearing the advice, they jump on the camels and race as fast as they can to the city. What does the wise man say? So let me repeat the puzzle. An Arab Sheikh tells his two sons to raise their camels to a distant city to see who will inherit his fortune. The one whose camel is slower will win. The brothers, after wandering aimlessly for days, ask a wise man for advice. After hearing the advice, they jump on the camels and race as fast as they can to the city. What does the wise man say? Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Let's everyone know your answer in the comment section. So let's check the solution now. The wise man tells them to switch camels. Let's check how this will work. Each son owns a camel. Let's call them camel A and camel B. If camel A is slower, son A gets the fortune. If camel B is slower, son B gets the fortune. Neither of the sons wants to enter the city first because they won't get the fortune. When they switch camels, son A is now riding his brother's camel camel B and son B is riding his brother's camel camel A. Now they each want the camel they are riding to get to the city first. If son A wins the race on camel B, that means his camel that is camel A was slower and he wins the fortune. The same is true for the other way around if the second son wins the race on camel A. Thus the suggestion given by the wise man is tell them to switch the camels so that the task will be completed soon. Two fathers and two sons went fishing one day and only caught three fish. One father said that is enough for all of us. We will have one each. How can this be possible? Let me repeat the puzzle. Two fathers and two sons went fishing one day. They were there the whole day and only caught three fish. One father said that is enough for all of us. We will have one each. How can this be possible? Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Do subscribe to the channel for the newest videos watching. Let's check the solution now. If you are struggling to get the correct answer, let me explain the solution now. The riddle can be conveniently solved by having the three people present each being of different generation. That is grandfather, father and grandson. The grandfather and father are both fathers and the father and his son are both sons. There is nothing in the riddle to suggest that one of the men cannot be both a father and a son. The solution to this puzzle is very simple, suppose if you think outside the box. Thus the solution is, the father, his son and his son's son. This equals two fathers and two sons for a total of three. There are nine dogs within a fence puzzle is going viral on WhatsApp for quite some time now. Let me read puzzle now. As shown in the image, there are 9 dogs within a fence. By constructing just 2 more square fences, can you make sure that each dog is in isolation? Let me repeat the puzzle. As shown in the image, there are 9 dogs within a fence. By constructing just 2 more square fences, can you make sure that each dog is in isolation? The puzzle is being shared over WhatsApp for quite some time now. This puzzle is going viral over social media. As many people have been trying to solve the puzzle, many are still wondering whether their answer is correct or not. Many are still not able to solve it. 
To all those who are wondering about there are 9 dogs with an FN sensor, here is everything you need to know about it. Feel free to pause the video and try yourself before checking the solution. Do subscribe to the channel for the newest videos watching. Let's everyone know your answer in the comment section. Let's check the solution now. If you are struggling to get the answer, let me explain the solution now. It might seem tricky at first, but there is a very simple way of working out the real answer. To solve this riddle, one just needs to draw a diagonal square and a stride square inside it. First, let's draw a diagonal square. Now, draw a stride square. As we can see now, by constructing just two square fences, each dog is in isolation. This is one of the most interesting riddle which requires out of the box thinking to achieve the correct answer. That's all for this video. Do let me know for any questions. I will try to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.